Oh, whoa, where am I? Hmm, looking around, I must be on some sort of mountain. Well, anyway, hello there and welcome back to another geography explaining video. I am currently holding a fossil, which I found on top of this mountain. But how did this fossil, which was once a sea creature, end up on top of this mountain? I mean, looking around, there's no ocean near to be found. So try to keep up, make some notes, and in the end, you'll be able to answer that question. How did this fossil end up on top of a mountain? In year one, you will learn about plate tectonics and that continental plates and oceanic plates move. This movement of tectonic plates is caused by the heat of the Earth's core and this drives the convection current and eventually the convection current moves the tectonic plates around and when the tectonic plates bump into each other they create mountains. Mountains like these, pointy, tall and steep. So how did these mountains form and how did the fossil end up on top of them? To answer this, we have to travel back in time. Whoa! It seems like we are at the bottom of the ocean. Hey look, it's the fossil that I was holding at the beginning of the video. It's an ammonite. We must be back in time about at least 70 million years ago. Now to see how this cute little ammonite over here ended on top of a mountain, we must speed run through time to see exactly what happened. First, the ammonite dies. I know, very sad, but all good things come to an end. And his remains end up on the bottom of the ocean floor. Meanwhile, rivers bring sand and clay into the ocean and this sand and clay falls at the bottom of the ocean, forming a layer of sand and clay over and over again. This process where sand and clay falls down is called sedimentation. And with a lot of layers on top of each other, the ammonite gets buried within all these layers give so much pressure that the bottom layers turn into a rock. This is what we call sedimentary rock. And within this sedimentary rock, you can find the remains of the ammonite that we were just holding. This means that the ammonite has now turned into a fossil. As this happens, the oceanic plate on which the ammonite was living is part of a convergent plate movement. The plates go towards each other. And on both sides, the oceanic plate where the ammonite is laying on, two continental plates start to move in. Now we will have two faces. First, a part of the oceanic floor dives under the continental plate. The rocks that go down melt because of the heat inside the earth and the rocks turn into magma. But because it's warm, it wants to rise up again. So this magma that's rising up pushes the continental plate at the bottom. Some of this magma will cool down and turn into a rock. But this will be igneous rock. It's different than the sedimentary rock. Igneous rock is just cooled down magma. And some of the magma will find its way to the top, causing a volcano. This is one way how mountains are formed, but this is not the way how fossils end up on top of a mountain. Now we only know about igneous rock on top of a mountain. So now we move on to the second phase. At some point, the two continental plates will have squished all the oceanic plate in between. The oceanic plate has disappeared under the continental plates, but parts of the oceanic floor with all its sedimentary rocks and its fossils ended up on the edges of the continental plates. And as those continental plates bump into each other and rise up to form a mountain, it brings the fossils that were part of the oceanic plate that got stuck onto the edges of the continental plate all the way up to the top of the mountains. And this is how fossils end up on the mountains. But as you could see, not all mountains look the same. I mean, these mountains look much different than these mountains over here. So how did that happen? How come some are pointy and tall and some are kind of less pointy and more smooth and gradual? This all has to do with time. Because as time moves on, some of these plate boundaries become inactive and they don't push anymore. This means that the mountain is not growing anymore. And from the outside, there are forces that are trying to break down the rock 
by pure strength or just smashing into them. These outside forces are called exogenic forces. We will talk about them in paragraph two and three, so I won't tell too much about it now. So you can say that a young mountain that is just being formed or still is being formed is tall and steep and pointy. And the older ones that are not growing anymore, they are smoother, less pointy ones. So to summarize everything that we've learned today, you now know how mountains are formed, how igneous rock and sedimentary rock are formed, and how fossils end up in those sedimentary rocks, and also how these sedimentary rocks with these fossils end on top of the mountains. And also you have learned what the difference is between young mountains and old mountains. All right, I hope you learned something new today. I hope you were able to answer the questions that I asked throughout the video and I'll see you in class or in the next episode. Goodbye.